Hi, here's Chris with a new Blender Pro tutorial for you. This tutorial is aimed for experienced Blender users. If you like to get an insight into this easy car rig setup, then continue watching. If you are interested in the detailed step-by-step -step version of this tutorial, then visit my YouTube channel and seek for the extended tutorial version. Which challenges are solved with this car rig? So let's see which solution we have here. The first one is maybe the car follows a path and the speed can be controlled and the wheels are moving into the right driving direction. This is maybe the most important point for the users who are watching this video. I show it to you here in this at this position. The car is not only moving on the path, the wheels are moving, as you can see here, into the right direction, depending of the car's direction, of the car main moving direction. This is very important for the most users. And the wheels are sticking to the ground. You see, they are moving in the right speed or rotating into the with the right speed. The second solution, the second argument for the rig is the wheel axis follows the curve independently. What does it mean? I have two axes, the front and the rear axis, and we can see it here at this position. The front and the rear axis are independent. This is important for car rigs because when the car is moving over this hill, then first the front axis reach the hill and then the second one, the rear axis follows. And this is important. Now you can see it here and the car is moving or behaving like a real car. First the front axis moves and then the second one, the rear axis. And in this way, a hill can be, can be crossed in the right way with the right behavior. And the third uh, solution is the car body tilting. What is the car body tilting? The car body tilting can be seen the best here in the front, in the first frame, when I, when I start the video. The car body is moving depending on the curve uh, it drives through. So, or if, if the car is, is stopping immediately. So I, you can see it here, it starts and now it stops. Boing, and it moves, okay? It have a delay, a moving delay. And this tilting, this body tilting, can be controlled here. So you as a user can control how much the car is moving when it's when it's stopping or when it's going into the curve. This is a simulation and I have a solution for you how to control this and how to uh, increase or decrease the amount of this movement. And the fourth uh, solution here in this rig is the wheels are all, always directing to the car's main driving direction. I switch back to the car driver cam and as you can see when the car is moving the wheels are moving too you see the wheels are directing into the curve and all works like it should and the last feature the car driver in my case i have a driver and the car driver controls a wheel this one here and as you can see maybe the driver is moving his hands according of the wheel direction. Um, this is uh, solved here in this rig too, and I show it in this, in my main tutorial how it works. And I will show it to you later uh, with some, some sentences and explain it how it works. It's very easy. Okay, this is what you can expect from this rig, and let's see how I have set up this rig. Before we continue, do you like this cubic world style? Zacharias Reinhardt from CG Boost has prepared a great tutorial series how to create your own cubic worlds. His course teaches you how to build and animate beautiful low-poly 3D scenes from scratch in a distinct style using only free tools. Click the link in the video description and check it out. Ok, let's continue. So how is the car following the path? How does it work? The path curve here is the main controller. It provides the values we need to direct the car and to move the wheels. I am using the evaluation time value. It's a value here 
you can see it here in the path animation top and there is an evaluation time value and it's animated. And I'm using this value to control the car direction and to rotate the wheels. First, the rear axis is following the path. You can see it here. I switch my control, my recontrols on. This is the rear axis. It's an empty object. Uh, but I use just the position and not the follow curve option. What I mean is this object here has a constraint. The first one here, follow path. And what I do is I just use the, the forward axis or I set up the axis who have to follow this path and the up axis. And I don't use the follow curve option, just the position for this, for this object. So it's, it follows this curves position. The reason for this is the need to get a real axis movement, as you have seen it in the intro video where I've shown you uh, the, the hills crossing. And the rear axis is directing to the front axis. This is a rear one and this is a front axis. And this rear axis has a new constraint, track 2. And the track 2 constraint is constraining or uh, directing to the front axis here. And this front axis is independent of the rear axis. Okay, The so most objects are parented to the rear axis, but not the front axis. It has an own value that is following the curve and it has a small offset to, to move it to the front axis position. Okay, The front axis have several tasks. Uh, it provide the, provides the rear axis orientation, as, as, as I've explained, and follows the curve. This axis has now an option follow curve. Uh, the second option gives me the value to control the wheel rotation. As you can see, um, the rotation, the wheels are rotating into the curve here. Here, the parents, I have parented the wheels to this, uh, to this object. And this object has a copied rotation constraint. And this um, constraint is reading the rotation of my front axis. And because the front axis has a follow curve option, it rotates and my front object here re uh, reads the Z axis value and use the same value as the front axis to, to rotate. In this way, the wheels can rotate. This is a reason why I have uh, created uh, the front axis and the rear axis independently, mainly for the for the hill crossing, but also for other for other points. This is what I've done for this axis: how the car follows the curve. Okay, so how are the wheels rotating into the right direction and speed? The wheels are parented to empty objects to control them. As you can see, these are the empty objects for the wheels here. And in this way, I can change the wheels, the wheel meshes here without destroying the main rig. So the meshes are parented to the objects here. And if I want, I can change this mesh without destroying the main rig. So this object is actually rotating. The wheel parent object, this one here, are driven by the evaluation value of the curve. You remember the evaluation value is here, this one, this evaluation time value, and this value is a driver for this object here. And what I do is I use this value for the x-axis of this object and they rotate. So you can see it here. This is a driving uh, the value. I switch back. I switch to the driver's window so we can see it. The driver's window and we can see I am writing the driver information of our evaluation time to this rotation x axis, to this axis here. And because I do this, the axis rotates. A simple expression calculates uh, the rotating speed in the main direction. The direction itself is controlled by the current negative and positive evaluation time value of the path. The minus at the start change the rotation direction here. When I uh, remove the, the minus, the wheel will di uh, direct or will rotate into the opposite side direction. And uh, the divisor here is used uh, to reduce the rotation speed. So when I want to increase the rotation speed here, depending of my evaluation time, I have to multiply. And if I want to reduce the speed, I have to be divide. 
depending on the frame amount, you have to adjust the divisor to get the right speed, so this value here. So in this way, you can adjust the wheel to have stick to the ground. Okay, so you, as soon as you have the right value here, the wheel will rotate depending of the of the movement. So you have some, you have to do some tweaks, and then you have the right value, the right expression to rotate into the right direction and, and movement. To control the acceleration, you, you just animate the evaluation time value of the curve here. So I have this curve here and here's the evaluation time. And as and when I when I uh, look into my graph editor, here's the evaluation time, you can see it. I've animated this value and depending of the evaluation time, it actually the evaluation time gives the position for our rear axis. So depending of this value here, the position of the car will be defined. Okay, so you can see it here. I have animated when I, and then first we have this value, then I stop here at this position. I don't change the value. Then I go back and then move again. And this gives me this animation here. So you can control everything just by this value. You don't need other animations because the car is, is uh, behaving automatically, okay? So this is how the wheels are rotating and how the right direction and speed can be controlled. How does the car body tilting works? Um, I switch back to the timeline here. The car body is controlled by a cloth simulation object. I will show it to you. I have it here in my in my car tilt simulation here. How it, so is this, this is the code. Uh, this is the object here. And I've created a thin poly model that falls upwards. Okay, it's a cloth simulation and it falls upwards. I've negated the gravity value. You can see it here in the physics tab. Here is a cloth and there is a negative gravity value, a very big value. And this value is responsible for falling up in this direction. A higher gravity value leads to a rigid spring-like movement. And when I switch to the car driver cam, maybe we can see it. So now you see it's moving and you see it's, it's moving around. And depending on this value, it's moving more or less. The simulation model is parented to the rear axis and follows the main car direction. So we can see it here. This is the rear axis. This is a hierarchy here. And the car simulation is parented to the rear axis. And I don't render it because we just use it for the simulation. To get the right tilting orientation, I use an empty that is parented to three vertices of the simulation mesh. This empty here, you can see it here in this object, is has a parent and it's the three vertices mode, the parent type. So I've used three vertices here of this object and this three vertices are needed to parent this empty here and attach it to our simulation. And in this way, I can read the empty orientation, this one, and write it to the car body parent object, this one here. So this is moving and this object has a constraint, constraint and this constraint copies the rotation of this car body, uh, car dynamics root object here, this one. And I'm just reading the X and Y axis, but not the Z axis. The Z axis is uh, in this rotation here, in this rotation, and I need just the, the front rotation and the side rotation. And this is the reason why I've not used the z-axis. And its uh, rotation from this object here will be copied to the body, and the body is parented to the axis rear, and in this way it's independent. The wheel axis and the car body are controlled by a single hook. As you can see, when I switch back to the, to the driver cam and we move the animation, then you see this body here is moving here. It looks like like a uh, dynamic, like gum, you see, it's moving. But this axis here is not moving. So what I've done, this is vertices here, who are, uh, which are the responsible for this axis, the vertices, has a hook. Uh, the hook is parented, is placed here. Uh, the position is not very important, but it should be here at the car. And the hook is parented to the rear axis too. And this hook is controlling this mesh. 
So this mesh has a modifier, a hook modifier, and I take this hook here in the back, and I have a group, a vertex group uh, here, I show it to you. Select, here is the vertex group, and the group represents the axis uh, elements, and this this group uh, is controlling uh, is controlled by this hook and when I move the hook here for example then these meshes or these vertices are moved and in this way I can stick or have it uh, make it rigid and, and stick it to the wheels position so let's see again when I move you can see the car is moving and it moves dynamically the body but this axes are not moving yeah very nice and it looks like uh, the axis stay at the wheels position and all looks fine. This is how I have uh, created the car body tilting. So the last um, thing or the last option is how the steering wheel and the car driver work, so how they are controlled. Here is the steering wheel and when we play the animation you see the wheel uh, is rotating. I switch maybe the simulation of here so okay and maybe here and you can see the the, the car the, the steering wheel and the hands are moving how I've done this the steering wheel is a separate model here here we have it and it's parented as all the others to the car body root object oh no maybe not all the others but this steering wheel is parented here to the car body root Let's see it. We can see it here. Car root. Yeah. Okay. And um, I've I use a rotation a rotation constraint here to read the rotation um, of one of the wheels parent objects. This is one of the parent objects, and I read the rotation here the for of this object. I just use the z axis to do this. Um, it's important to set the mix value to after original and the target and owner space to local like here and in this way you can uh, keep the the rotation of your wheel here and all rotations that are read from this uh, wheel will be placed after the rotation of this wheel okay so it's it will be handled like a child object of a parented object and all the rotation will be added after this one. This is very important to, to keep the steering wheel in this in this position here and just rotate the z-axis. The driver it's himself, it's based on a, a simple rigify add-on rig. Uh, this allows me to pose the driver and place him into the car. I can show it maybe to you. Uh, wait, here we have it. This is a rig here. And this is just a simple rigify rig that works as always. Um, this allows me to post the driver and the driver is parented completely to the car body parent and uh, follows all directions mainly. And the hands here, these objects are, has constraints, have constraints here, child of, and the, this, uh, this uh, objects are childs of our steering wheel. So uh, as soon as the steering wheel rotates, it controls this uh, hands here. So in this way um, both hands can rotate together with the steering wheel. If you want you can add some more. I've done this. Add some more copy rotation constraints and you can copy the rotation values of the steering wheel and add them to these bones here. It's sometimes interesting because then the driver looks more dynamic. As you can see the driver is moving the whole body a little bit and the, the head in this way and all this is controlled by the rotation of the steering wheel and it looks a bit nicer when the complete driver is moving a little bit. Uh, this is how the driver is controlled. So great, okay, and that's basically it. And uh, I hope you got a good understanding how I've created this car rig. And if you need specific information, um, then watch my extended tutorial on my YouTube channel. The long version describes all steps in detail. I hope you like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Did you know I have online shops for digital assets? You can find them on Blender Market, Gumroad, Flip Normals and even on ArtStation. Maybe you'll find a nice product there. In this way you support me to create more free videos. That's all for today and thank you for watching. Bye bye.